something you normally see in a movie or TV show and you never actually think to yourself, what if this happens to me? Or what if this happens to one of my friends or all of my friends? And then once I got there, I realized that this really did happen. There's nothing I could do. And now I just have a much greater understanding of how something can change in an instant. Well, I was watching Spice Girls with Kayla and Casey and Abby. And then Brandon texted Abby and asked if we wanted to go to s zombie land or someplace. And we decided to go. And then Brandon and Tommy and Robert picked us up in Tommy's car outside Casey's house. We were really packed in the back seat, so we weren't really worried about our seat belts at the time. We were picking up all my friends at the house, and we were going to go to Zombieland. It's like a place where all the teenagers go to light the torch. We crossed a bridge, and there was this red truck coming one way. And I didn't think anything of it, so I kept driving. And then as I kept driving, there was a car behind us, and I realized it was the same truck, and uh, everybody noticed it too. So. They were telling me to drive faster, so I was. We were just like, go faster, go faster. And he sped up. We probably got up to around like 90 or 100. And we went to go around a bend. And we slowed down a little bit. We were still going like 70 or 80, though. We went, that's when we hit the tree. I remember going airborne, everybody screaming. Then we like landed in the ground, and everything was like shaking. You could hear like people moving around and like hitting trees and like branches cracking. All I remember is it looking like it kind of just fell off Earth, like it was just went black. The call came in as a motor vehicle accident in the area of Sky Hill Road at uh, Zombie Land. Um, they stated that there was a vehicle into a tree and unknown uh, status of patients or entrapment. I remember dragging everyone like out of the car. I dragged Robert, he was in the front seat. He, he was like passed out and I dragged out Abby out of the side window after it broke and then Marquette got out by herself and I got out and I tried to get out Tommy but I couldn't because the steering wheel was pinned to his legs. I kept thinking like is everyone okay because Abby was like non-responsive on the ground and I was like holding her up and Brandon had blood like dripping from his face and it looked like a horror movie and you know, Robert was wandering around, he didn't know what happened, and Tommy was like moaning, couldn't get out of the car. And I just kept thinking like, like, is everyone gonna be okay? Like, are they gonna be fine? Because I knew I was okay. But I didn't know like how bad they were. First thing I seen was a older model uh, Black Eagle Talon. It was into a tree. Uh, whenever I arrived on scene, uh, my dispatcher, you know, advised me to update uh, them on the status of the patients so that they could notify EMS and fire. Um, when I got there, there were several of the juvenile teenagers. They were outside the vehicle and did observe a uh, uh, white male driver who was uh, trapped inside the vehicle. I was scared to figure out if anyone was hurt or not, and then I actually seen them cutting Tommy out with the Jaws of Life, so I thought that he died at that time. It was unknown if uh, the status of the driver, because he was trapped in the vehicle, and a lot of times when they're trapped in, they're fine until they get cut out of the vehicle. And then, you know, because all that blood, if, if that vehicle is trapped against their legs, pin it, it stops all the blood. So when that vehicle is released from, you know, when, when they extricate him from the vehicle, Sometimes there's, you know, permanent damage or even death when, in those circumstances. Once I really pretty much gained consciousness, there was like three or four firefighters and ambulance workers around me cutting the car open. They took the roof off, the door off. They had to pry the engine off of my leg, which fell onto my leg. That's why I couldn't get out. And uh, they had to cut off my clothes. and. The guy had to hold my neck straight just in case I didn't break anything in my neck. So I was transferred from like one ambulance to another and at one point I was in there with Robert and Robert like had no idea what was going on. He kept asking me what happened and who was where and then I was in one with Tommy and he was in kind of a bad condition. They had to take him out to the helicopter. I remember they drove like into the middle of a field with the helicopters to drop Tommy off 
and then they rolled me across the field and I like saw the helicopters like going up. First thought was if everybody was okay. I really didn't care much about myself because I realized I was responsible. I got a slight tear in my rotator cuff in my left shoulder and just other scratches and bruises. Uh, I broke five bones in my face and then I cut, like, I have a hairline fracture in, like, my skull and, like, I split my head open. Just a severe concussion. They thought my leg was broken, but after we got to the hospital, it wasn't. I had a cut across the back of my head, which took, like, eight stitches, and I broke my C7 vertebrae in my neck. I had a severe concussion, which I'm still dealing with today. And um, I had a skull fracture, which was like, they explained it to me, which you can't like see it, but if I was to like point out right between my eyes, that's where it was at in my skull. The vehicle, I mean, that was, it's such a small vehicle. You got five people in that vehicle. Um, I would say, you know, those, those kids are very lucky to you know, walk away from that, considering the damage and the type of vehicle they were driving. If I would have been maybe an inch lower, I probably would have been paralyzed or would have had some type of paralyzation with my arms. We went to uh, the car dealership place where the car was, and he said it was like, as soon as we showed up, he was like, how many people died? And we were like, none of us. He's like, that was the worst accident I've ever seen. I can't believe all you are alive. You're all lucky. It's just it's kind of crazy. Like, think about it happened to us. The car just, it it looked like we all should have died. There was blood everywhere. The roof was cut off. The doors were cut off. The engine was falling through the front bumper. Everything just looked awful. Teens hear this time and time again from their parents. Speed, you know, they, they just, it's one, through one ear, not the other. They don't realize, you know, speed, you know, kills. And, you know, if they were driving slow, you know, you have more control of your vehicle. If I could give advice to anybody, it'd be Go to the speed limit and wear your seatbelt. I would just say think about it. Think about who's in your car, what you're doing. My dad used to tell me when I got my license, he said driving a car is like walking around with a loaded gun. It's a big responsibility, and they just need to remember that. Like That's a really big thing that you're taking care of, and you need to be careful not only for yourself but for other people, other people on the road. When I have kids and they start driving, I would love to take them to an accident scene like that. I know it's, you know, graphic and I don't want them to see it, but I want them to see the effects that it can cause and, you know, would hope that maybe, you know, it would save their life one day and they would think twice about speeding and, uh, you know, just doing dumb things when you're, you know, a kid. I feel really guilty about it all. Making my um, parents go through all that. I believe the accident was my fault. I feel like if everything wasn't blown out of proportion, like maybe that truck had nothing to do with what we thought it was and I was going the speed limit, that this might not have ever happened. But we got caught up in the fairy tale and it turned out to be a disaster. I've always had like a high respect for life and I've always, you know, tried to do the best I can, like, you know, live it to the fullest and take advantage of everything I have. But I think I do value it more, I appreciate it more. When you're that close, I'd say, to death or to something so serious, it makes you think, it makes you take a step back and it really makes you thankful for everything you have. I look at life as it's like a gift instead of just happening. You need to like live life and realize that you only get it once.